Hey folks, this is Arun Taravyam and I'm a simulation product manager with Go Engineer. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a simulation program called Structural Professional Engineer. Simulia SPE is an extension to the existing SolidWorks simulation portfolio that gives users access to advanced nonlinear analysis capabilities. This enables users to solve finite element analysis challenges involving complex contact, large deformation, and nonlinear materials. Here are the analysis types available with the program. Users can essentially validate the structural performance, vibration performance, and the influence of thermal loads on the strength of their designs. Let's talk about what makes SPE stand out as a premium structural analysis solution. Firstly, it is powered by the world-renowned Abacus Solver. Users have access to a high-end simulation experience within a very intuitive UI. Here's an example of a three-point bend test performed on a metal frame simulating the permanent set on the material once it plastically deforms. Next, its unique ability to auto-detect contact between multiple entities during the analysis adds to the convenience of accurate contact simulation, especially in cases like these where the object is collapsing on itself. Sequential loading is a technique in FEA where structures undergo different types of loads in sequence. For instance, here we have a rubber seal that is pushed into a cavity first and then pressurized. The software can use the endpoint of a certain analysis as a starting point for the next. This especially comes in handy when simulating preloaded assemblies like bolted flanges. In addition to standard tetrahedron elements, users have access to hexahedral elements. This gives the software a computational advantage when simulating complex shell structures, incompressible materials such as rubber and foam, and about any geometry that can be meshed using these elements. Speaking of computational advantage, SPE is an application on the 3D Experience platform. This gives users access to cloud computing capabilities to speed up their analyses. For instance, we can either utilize up to eight local cores or up to 16 cloud cores to run the analysis. The results can be stored locally or in a common vault on the cloud. This enables organizations to share analysis results, collaborate, and exchange ideas with the various apps on the 3D Experience platform using web browser-enabled devices. Finally, the key differentiator for this tool is the integration with SOLIDWORKS. The SOLIDWORKS connector enables users to transfer their simulation setup from SOLIDWORKS simulation to SPE. Any changes to the model geometry can also be updated through the connector. Now let's take a quick look at a common analysis workflow with the program. Here we have a quarter model of a rubber button from some device that is assembled over a couple of semiconductors. The device is activated when the button is pushed and the semiconductors make contact. The objective of this analysis is to determine the force required to push the button. During this process, the button has a tendency to buckle at this filleted area, and this is quite complex to simulate in 3D. So we're going to use SOLIDWORKS and SPE to solve this problem. A typical starting point is to set up the analysis in SOLIDWORKS simulation. You will notice that the analysis tree already has the material properties and the fixtures assigned. Using the 3D Experience simulation connector, we can transfer this setup to SPE. The connector panel gives users feedback on the simulation elements from SOLIDWORKS that can be transferred successfully which in this case is pretty much everything. Selecting the Create Simulation button initiates the transfer. During this process, you will need to input the storage location for the part files and the simulation data. This is to allow users to easily share this data with everyone who has access to this location on the 3D Experience platform. No USB is required. And here it is. A separate application is launched with the SPE app and the model loaded in. There is an assistant panel that gives you the status of the simulation setup. Everything with the green check mark or a green square is good to go. The only missing item is the load applied to the button, which is indicated by a red circle. We'll be setting this up later. Next, the feature tree. The feature tree, much like SOLIDWORKS, lists the model, boundary conditions, mesh, and the material properties for easy access and update. Let's hide a few of these roller slider fixture symbols to get a better look at the model. Finally, the action bar. 
The action bar gives users access to inputs for the simulation setup. It lists a set of commands that pertains to the item selected on the assistant panel. For instance, let's select the setup button. The action bar now has a procedures tab that allows users to update the time step setting. We'll go with an initial time increment of 0.01 seconds and allow the solver to build up to 0.1 seconds during the solution process. This is very typical for a buckling problem such as this. Next, we're going to need a remote connection to simulate the button push. This can be done from the connections item on the assistant panel. The updated action bar should have the connections tab where the coupling tool can be accessed. For the definition, we'll grab the face and the vertex. Since this is a quarter model, the load needs to be coincident with the axis and rigidly transferred to the surface of the button. The contact interactions are already defined, ensuring that these components will interact if they come into contact during the analysis. You can think of this as a global automatic sliding contact definition. Moving on to the restraints. Since we are using the coupling to simulate the button push, we will need to allow it to move only in the y direction. We will add a fixed displacement constraint and restrict every direction but the translation in y. For the load, we will apply a prescribed displacement to the coupling. The goal here is to determine the force required for the actuation. So we will move the button by 1 mm in the negative y direction. This will ensure that the button contacts the semiconductors and closes the gap between them, ultimately calculating the force for the entire process. Finally, the mesh. The software applies 3D tetrahedral elements by default. As I mentioned earlier, we have access to the hexahedral element type as well, but that's not necessary for this problem. The global and local densities can be modified from the mesh part manager. Here, we will update the mesher's element size for the semiconductors and add local mesh refinements to the filleted areas on the button that are prone to collapse. We can then let the auto mesher take over to capture the geometry. That should conclude the analysis setup. We can run the analysis from the simulate button on the assistant panel. We can use solver credits to solve on the cloud or expand our local computing resources. We'll solve it locally and use the 8 cores that my laptop has to offer. Once the simulation is complete, we can visualize stresses, strains and displacements for every solution step. We can grab the animate button to simulate the actuation process as well. As expected, the button buckles and the semiconductors make contact. Now let's take a look at the force. You will see that the force required to actuate the quarter model is about 0.05 newtons. So the total force requirement for the entire model is around 0.2 newtons, which increases rapidly once the button makes contact. It is also interesting to note that the inflection point on the curve indicates the buckling point for the button. Now for the interesting part. Let's update the fillet radius on the button to see how it affects this force. We can do this quite easily by switching back to SOLIDWORKS and updating the geometry. We will increase the radius from 2 mm to 2.25 mm. After this, we can switch back to the platform and select the SOLIDWORKS update button. This will update the geometry and the rest of the boundary conditions including the mesh. We can directly run the simulation and investigate the results without any extra setup. Now here's the animation of the stress results for the updated button. Looking at the force results, you will see that we have about 0.125 newtons on the quarter model that translates to a total force of 0.5 newtons, which is a significant increase from the previous design. Again, note the inflection point on the curve that indicates the onset of buckling. There are several reasons that make SPE a compelling simulation solver to adopt, and among them, integration, solver strength and computational freedom are big ones. For more information regarding this product, please contact GoEngineer. Again, 
This is Arun Taravim. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.